A weekend full of shuffling games around because of cancellations and rescheduling didn't stop the NWAC from having a really good weekend of games. Hey guys, it's Josh, the 9 inning know-it-all, coming to you today to talk a little NWAC baseball from this past weekend. Before we do, take a moment, hit subscribe down below. That way you know when new videos come out. I plan on doing an NWAC recap video every week all the way through the NWAC Championship Tournament, minus one week in which I'll be gone. And I actually want to do some recaps and kind of some recruiting stuff over the summer as well related to NWAC. So doing a lot of stuff like that. You've got interviews of NWAC players coming out. Going to be a lot of fun. Once again, subscribe so you know when stuff comes out. But guys, let's jump into this. This weekend was crazy from the get-go before games even got started. Uh, initially, I was going to go cover Lower Columbia versus Lane on Friday night, Saturday. That got canceled. Lane is not letting their uh, teams travel up to Washington right now, it sounds like. I didn't really check all into it. I'm just making an assumption because of the coronavirus. Um, I live in Washington. Uh, my county doesn't have any reported cases and to be honest a lot of the coaches and the players really weren't too concerned about it uh, mainly because they're pretty healthy and they know that you know this this virus really affects those who are at risk so you know they were kind of kind of frustrated a little bit with the cancellations with the rescheduling but it wasn't that big of a deal but there were a number of teams that had to reschedule uh, Columbia Basin, who ended up coming to Lower Columbia, had to reschedule. I know Centralia had to reschedule a lot of stuff they were doing this weekend. So it was kind of a kind of a weird thrown together weekend. But at the same time, we had a lot of great stuff going on. Uh, right off the bat, jumping to Spokane, I talked about them last week because they played here uh, in Longview, and they've got a solid team and they got a great pitching staff. I'm an outstanding pitching staff, and what highlights that is. This past weekend, McCabe Cottrell, who I actually interviewed last year at the NWAC Championship Tournament. Uh, great left-handed pitcher. Guy can throw uh, low 90s. I think he even hits like 94, that area. So uh, he can flat out throw the ball. And he throws a no-hitter against Clackamas uh, yesterday. So congratulations to McCabe. Like I said, I've seen him pitch last year. I've seen him pitch this year already. And he can throw. He is an outstanding pitcher. He may argue, arguably be the best pitcher in the NWAC. Um, I know there's a few other guys who are in that conversation. To say that Cottrell is, is top five, I think most people would, would probably agree with that. But he's, he's an amazing talent, great, great young pitcher. And you know, whether he decides to, uh, I believe he's committed. I don't remember where he's committed to. But if he decides to stick with that, he'll do great. Uh, if he gets drafted, he'll probably do great doing that as well. So, like I said, left-handed pitcher, throws in the 90s. He's got great stuff, and, you know, he's got a pretty high ceiling for what he can do. So, throws a no-hitter. You know, that, that's awesome to see. I love seeing, you know, no-hitters. And being connected to the, to a guy with having done an interview with him last year makes it even, even cooler for me to see that. So, uh, I did get to cover games this weekend. I covered Lower Columbia, Columbia Basin. Uh, they... Got to be able to schedule together because both had uh, their opponents cancel. Uh, once again, I think mainly because of the virus. So uh, Columbia Basin, which does have a connection to Lower Columbia uh, through their uh, athletic director office area, did come down, played four games set, and they lost three of four. So Lower Columbia did win three of the four games. But I will admit, even though Columbia Basin is not what I would consider a top-tier team, they're still competitive. They were very competitive. Played some good games. Uh, really, the biggest thing for them is they made mental mistakes. They just broke down, and when they did that, it let Laura Columbia jump on them and, and take advantage of it. And really, the one game where they didn't make any mistakes, they won six nothing. Um, you know, Laura Columbia was a team making mistakes, not able to get the ball in play when they needed to move runners around. And you know, that's a part of baseball. You know, that's you make mistakes and it costs you. And so, I see Columbia Basin as a team that. If they can really kind of figure out what they're doing, really get their um, focus going and not have those ups and downs that you know a lot of teams have uh, in baseball, they can be very competitive in that East region. You know, I still think Spokane is the, you know, the clear-cut favorite for that region, but Yakima is going to have something to say about that. You've got you know, Columbia Basin, they're going to have a say in that as well. And it's going to be a great region. It's going to be a lot of fun, I think, this spring, seeing what happens and how things play out. 
Um, you know, I think it's very real possibility that Columbia Basin could even get into the, the regional tournaments and, you know, make a run and try and make it to the, the actual NWAC championship tournament. Now, whether that happens or not, you know, there's still a lot of season to go. You never know what's going to pop up, injuries, or which key players are going to step up and who isn't going to step up. And, you know, that's really what early in the season is all about. It's about seeing which of your sophomores are going to become leaders and which of your freshmen are going to adjust to that college level faster than, you know, other players. So, Lower Columbia still looked good. Um, the game they did lose uh, was kind of a circumstance, just bad circumstances everywhere they turned. Uh, guys not feeling the ball. Their main starter, Dakota Hawkins, actually uh, got hurt, got pulled out of the game. You know, I didn't really check to see what his injury status was at all, so I don't know. I just know he had to get pulled out. Was in good spirits, you know, the rest of the game. The next game, he was still there um, cheering on the guys. So, you know, it, hopefully it's just a one-week thing because he is a talented pitcher, talented guy. Um, really, you know, I said it last week on the, on the recap, Lower Columbia is probably the number one team right now. Uh, and it's not just because I cover them or because I have a hat of theirs, uh, but it's because I've seen, you know, the tournament level teams the last few years, and this team is solid. Their freshmen are are really very talented. I, I've this is one of the best freshman class I've seen uh, at Lower Columbia and really at any other school. They've got a lot of guys who are stepping up, and so they're they're really the cream of the crop. So once again, with Columbia Basin being competitive with them and, and winning a game on Lower Columbia's field, that's you know, that's something to take note of. So another great series that happened this weekend, I kind of wish I would have been there as well, uh, Everett versus Yakima, two teams that have really been uh, pretty strong the last few years. Everett has a long history of being a, a top-level program. Yakima uh, as well has a lot of history, and especially the last few years has been pretty strong, uh, winning a title just a couple years ago as well. And they played a series where they split two games to two. And outside of one game, there was, there was a blowout, 15-5. to five, Everett won that one. All, all the other games, all three of them were one-run games. 4-5, uh, to five, in which Yakima won. 13-12, Everett won. And 7-8, to eight, uh, Yakima won that one. So, man, those are good games. We have one-run games, got scoring. You know, I think both teams will you know, figure out their pitching in time. So you won't see those big... 13, 12, 7 to 8, 15, 5 games later on if they were to play against each other again. But at the same time, they've got offense they can hit. They're going at it. You know, and that would have been a great series. Those Both both those teams are solid. Um, now, I really think Everett has a chance to take the North again this year. I think Bellevue might be my pick. I haven't seen Bellevue play this year. i just kind of been looking at what they have and what they've been doing. And they've had a pretty solid team, it looks like. So, no, but Everett's going to be in there. Edmonds is going to be in there competing as well. There's a lot of good teams in that north as well. Yakima, you know, they'll fight Spokane. They'll fight, you know, Columbia Basin for that title in the east. And, um, you know, we'll see how the season plays out. Uh, one more series that happened this weekend that I kind of took note of. Schmeckita traveled up to Tre Treasure Valley and took three out of four. Um, Schmeckita looks pretty good. I got to see them kind of in a preseason matchup with Laura Columbia a few weeks ago. Uh, both teams just throwing guys out there to see what they can do and, and just, you know, kind of testing the waters with their pitchers and, and their hitters. And they look solid. They look like the team that uh, will compete in the South. Uh, I know that the South has, you know, Len Benton, who's kind of, I think Len Benton is my uh, favorite to win the South. I think they have the team to do it this year. Mount Hood is going to be solid, and, and they've already been showing that they have talent. Lane is always a talent down there. Umqua is kind of they might be a little bit of a spoiler down there. And then once again, Schmeckita, you know, they're looking solid. So I think there's going to be some good competition in the South as well. You know, in the last few years, a lot of times you'll see one region, you know, has maybe one, maybe two teams. And all the rest of the teams have kind of fallen off and not really able to compete at that top level. But this year might be one of the deepest years for all four regions. Because even when you look at the West, uh, it used to be you'd have Lower Columbia and Tacoma and Pierce would be up in there. And then you kind of have this drop-off of teams with Centralia, Grace Harbor, Green River. But this year, I think Centralia is going to be far more competitive than they have been in the past. I think Grace Harbor is going to be more competitive than they have been in the past. I'm um, just kind of seeing what, what they're doing, the players they're getting in. And Grace Harbor is a tough place to recruit. It really is. Uh, people who aren't from this area don't realize that is not an area that 
anyone really wants to go to for a lot of reasons. It's a tough area, um, not the richest of areas, very poor community type thing. But you know what? If you get the right guys in there, you can compete, be competitive, and, and you know make a name for yourself. So I, I see all four regions this year being more competitive than they have been really the last five years that I've been covering uh, NWAC baseball. And that's good. That's good for the baseball, good for the Northwest, good for the NWAC conference. Uh, just shows that there's real talent up here in the Northwest. So I just, I, I'm excited. This is this is maybe the one year I've been more excited than any other to really cover uh, NWAC baseball. One, I'm knowing more of the coaches. So at this point, I know almost all the coaches uh, for the teams I see on a regular basis. I've at least met them, talked with them. I've got to know them at least on some level. So really when I'm covering games at Laura Columbia, it doesn't matter which dugout I go into to photograph. There are there are players, there are coaches who know who I am, and that's exciting for me. It's fun to be able to walk into a dugout and have the coaches who already know who I am, already know what I'm doing, what I'm about, saying, "Hey, Josh, you know, you know, good to see you. Take photos. Thanks for coming out." It means a lot to me. It really does mean a lot to me. So, um, so yeah, I, I'm excited for this year. There's gonna be some great competition. You know, already seen that with a lot of teams going out there. It will only get better. I really think this season will only get better in terms of the level of competition as, as teams figure out who their starting lineups are going to be. And, you know, like I said, my, my favorites for each division, I got Laura Columbia in the west, Len Benton in the south, Spokane in the east, and Bellevue in the north. Um, but, you know what, if you told me that Everett or Edmonds would take the north, wouldn't be surprised. If you told me Yakima was taking the east, I, I wouldn't be surprised. If you said Mount Hood or Lane or, or Schmeckett are taking the south, I wouldn't be too surprised about that. And even in the West, if you said Tacoma or Pierce or even Centralia just had a run and, and took the, the region, I wouldn't be surprised about that in a lot of ways. So going to be good this year. I'm excited to do that. Uh, but guys, before we close off, I do want to highlight some uh, other individuals who are former NWAC players, some guys who are playing the, at the four-year college level. Um, right now, you know, there's tons of them. There's tons of guys out there. So I just kind of picked a few that I saw on Twitter that I knew um, that I've seen personally, met personally, or just, you know, were maybe, you know, tagged. So that way I knew that what was going on. First one, Christian Padilla, former Spokane uh, Falls Community College player. He's actually playing with Boise State this year. Hit his first home run of the year. That's awesome. Got to do an interview with him last year, also at the NWAC tournament. You know, good player. He's, he's kind of a, a lanky right-hander. He's He's not real bulky, big, but he's strong. I mean, he has power. He has a strong arm. I think it's a good pickup for Boise State, really. He, he was excited to go there and play. And so, you know, good. He got his first home run. Hope he gets some more this year and, and keeps it going. Uh, another NWAC alum, Seaver Whalen. Uh, he actually, I think it was a week and a half ago, got to play in a spring training game with the Tampa Bay Rays. So that's awesome. I know that you know, there's a few other NWAC guys who are playing – uh, in their spring training with their, their organization. And how awesome is that to uh, be a prospect, to be a minor leaguer, to go play at the major league game here and there. Um, that's just a cool thing. It's good to see Seaver. He was a former lower Columbia player. Um, got to interview him back in 2015. Another one uh, who's out, who's playing right now and doing well, Luke White, former Yakima Valley uh, player. He's with Lewis and Clark State College right now. Uh, hit a home run the other day. Solo shot to center field. Uh, I think it was a solo shot. Just it was a it was a pretty long shot too. I mean, he hit it out there, no doubt, or he was jogging the bases. So um, once again, it's great seeing NWAC guys doing good. And you know, even like Grace Harbor has a guy. Uh, let me see if I can pronounce his name right. Zach Sprodlin, and he's with Ottawa University, and he actually uh, helped his team with a victory by hitting a home run as well. So. A lot of former NWAC guys who are out there playing at the four-year level who are hitting the ball and and doing their thing. And it's awesome to see the NWAC being represented you know, at the four-year level, Division I schools, and they're producing. Uh, there's a lot of talent in the NWAC. I've said it before, and I'll keep saying it again. The NWAC level is some of the best talent in college across the nation. Guys who can throw, guys who can hit, um, guys who are looking at turning pro at some point. So... You know, a lot of talent here. I get to watch it, get to photograph it. I'm pretty lucky to do that. So, uh, so guys, that's my NWAC recap. Lots of great games, lots of stuff coming as well. 
Um, I'm not really covering a game this weekend. I actually have this weekend kind of open. I think I'm covering some softball, uh, but no baseball this week as Lower Columbia is actually down in Umpqua. And there's not really any other games near me that I know. I'll be checking my schedule and my calendars as well uh, to see if anything changes, anything happens. So I might cover baseball at some point, but I'm pretty sure I'm covering softball this upcoming weekend. Either way, I'm still loving it, still having fun and enjoying it. So guys, I'm Josh and now you know it all. Thanks for tuning in and check back next week as I do another recap telling you what happened in the world of NWAC baseball. See you later.